we're back again to do, <laughs> to do another one of these viral plant hack videos and really hit it with the experience of a gardener. Now, I'm by no means some sort of crazy expert master gardener, but I've got some seasons under my belt. And these videos, these blossom videos or what have you, which I think are really just some sort of content farm that doesn't care about the accuracy at all. So I'm not trying to say that they're making mistakes. I don't even think they care that they're making mistakes, but I think they're fun to look at from the perspective of a gardener to say why they're bad, because if you know why they're bad, consequently, you know what's good. And then you build the mind of a gardener and you can go into your garden and really get a sense for it. So this video is called, These Replanting Hacks Will Make You Grow Crazy and You Know It's Gonna Make Me Go Crazy. 2.4 million reactions, 288,000 comments and 5.3 million shares and 285 million views. That one video has more views than my entire gardening channel, potentially over every platform that I've ever done. So a little demoralizing, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and get into this. Links in the description. First of all, we're starting out with a bell pepper. Okay, so that's, you could do that. And that, <laughs> you can't do that. Well, here's the thing. When you're gonna dry pepper seeds, and I just gave away the answer, you don't wanna just plant a pepper directly in the ground. It's certainly possible. You can do it with a pepper, you can do it with a tomato, but you're gonna get better results from saving your pepper seeds if you, again, scrape them out of a mature pepper plant, allow them to dry, and then you can plant them at will wherever you want. The thing that's gonna happen when you do what I suspect is about to happen here, yeah, they just plant the pepper, is first of all, that's a cucumber coming out. That's a cucumber, so they're wrong there. <laughs> but um, what's gonna happen is you have a, this sort of shell that won't break down that fast, especially in a container. So it's probably gonna cramp the roots out a little bit. And also it's probably just a little too much organic matter to put right there, at least in my opinion. Again, just starting the seed in a normal way and saving that seed by letting it dry out and then preserving it for use whenever you want, it's probably a better move, especially because you really don't need to plant all the seeds within one pepper. That's just way too many planted way too close together. Okay, let's move on. Oh my God, okay. So we've taken a fresh, what looks to be a cooked cob of corn, uh, and even if it's not, it, maybe it's just a fresh, not completely mature ear of corn, and we have stabbed through the seeds with a stick. Well, what, what? there's nothing that's gonna happen here, but okay. Okay, oh my God. That's kind of cool. It's, it's kind of a cool little time lapse there. I don't believe that's a, a corn growing. I think it's an onion or something. So that's not gonna work because you've damaged the seed and the seed wasn't viable in the first place because it was too young. So number one problem, that's not the right time and or way to even plant it. Number two, it's not gonna grow if you just jam a stick through the actual thing that's supposed to create new life, right? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's look at this one. We've taken a little bottle and we've done this and then we've... Okay, so... Right, so with garlic, you've got your bulb and the bulb has cloves. Now what you normally do when you're planting garlic is you separate those cloves off. Generally, you plant the largest cloves and you wanna plant those maybe anywhere from four to six inches deep. It really depends on uh, how cold it gets in your area because a lot of people will plant garlic in the fall, let it over winter, and then it comes up in the spring. It's a very long season crop. So when you plant it in the fall, you allow it to sprout, you allow those roots to develop, but you have to plant it deep enough and mulch heavy enough that the root system is protected during the winter. Then it will come up and it's actually a really fantastic way to plant garlic and it turns out to be relatively easy. Now this, I guess it works to pre-sprout your garlic, but I don't know what the purpose would be because I would much rather just plant that clove deep and allow all of that to develop in the soil where it will always be instead of pre-sprouting and then transplanting it in. Uh, it just doesn't seem to make sense based on how garlic wants to be grown. Okay, so now we have a dragon fruit. Oh, you know I love a dragon fruit. So let's see if they don't botch my, my favorite plant of all time. So we're separating the seeds out. Okay, that's not so bad. And then, yeah, I mean, this is how you would, this is a way to germinate dragon fruit seeds. Now, the thing about dragon fruit seeds is most everyone will grow dragon fruit from cuttings because it takes so much longer to grow from seed. I went from cutting to three successful fruits in about exactly 12 months, which is really fast. If you're doing it from seed, 
that probably gonna be three years minimum, I would say, because you have so much plant tissue to grow. When you start from a cutting, you have a nice piece of stem, it can throw out roots, and it can start branching out really quickly. If you give it right conditions, you can get an epic dragon fruit. Okay, let's take a look at this walnut. Um, it looks like they've cracked it open, wet it to germinate it, and then keeping it moist, they have a little sprout, which there's, that's just like a bean sprout, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure that's just a bean sprout. But, um, okay, well, first of all, the thing with this is like, you're growing an entire tree, and it's gonna take years and years and years and years. So that's not like some funky hack. Most people who are growing a tree like this are just gonna go to the nursery and buy an established tree, especially because you get the variety you want, you get it grown from someone who's reputable, and growing fruit trees from seed, while possible and admirable, it takes a lot of your actual life. I mean, if it takes 10 years, let's say, let's take an avocado, it takes 15 years-ish to get that to like really max production, you have like five cycles of starting avocados from seed in an average human life. So <laughs> just go to a nursery and shortcut that a little bit instead of hacking. I mean, this hack should save time, not, not take it, right? Leek, one of my favorite alliums to grow. Okay, so we've got a leek, you're taking the cut end and you're putting it in. First of all, I kind of like eating that part, personally. I just, I think the white section is really flavorful. But this will work. This will definitely work. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, although I would put it in soil. I wouldn't put it in water. If you put it in water, all it's getting is sunlight, water, oxygen. If you put it in soil, it's getting all those three plus the nutrients within the soil, so it's gonna grow healthier. So if I was gonna re regrow leeks, that's what I would do. Okay, chamomile tea, flower heads contain seeds. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I don't actually know if it's true or not that the seeds are viable in a chamomile tea bag. Someone could comment down below. Maybe they are and that actually works. I'm not in entirely sure. Okay, so we've got a watermelon and we're gonna just germinate the watermelon seeds, transfer to soil. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. That seems fine. Strawberries, slicing it thin and placing it like that. I mean, that is one way that you could do it. That's one way you could do it. Most people who, again, some of these plants, it's not that you can't start them from seed, it's just that you, as a grower, typically choose not to because of the time and variety savings. So, especially in the world of strawberries, you have your June bearing, you have your ever bearing, there's a bunch of different types. You have your day neutrals. And so, if you want a specific type, you kind of just have to buy a bare root strawberry and or buy something from the nursery that's the variety you want. If you're doing it this way, you're just gonna get what you're gonna get, and you might not know if it's a June bearing or an ever bearing or et cetera. And that actually does matter when it comes to growing strawberries. Okay, if only strawberries grew that fast though, that'd be amazing. Okay, carrots, this is probably just gonna be a carrot top hack, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is actually true. Like that will work, and that will happen. Here's the problem with it. Almost everyone, when you buy carrots, most of us don't even buy carrots at the grocery store with the top still on, but on the off chance you do, or you go to the farmer's market, most of us don't even eat them. Now, that's kind of a shame because carrot tops, in fact, are edible. And actually last year I had a really good carrot top pesto that a friend made for me that was super delicious. So you can eat carrot tops. The problem with this is you're not gonna get a new carrot taproot. So that's why most of us grow carrots. And you're not gonna get the thing that you want. Okay, yeah, this is this this actually works. So again, this is not as bad of a blossom video as most of them. The question about works versus should you do it is the question really at hand, right? So I actually did this. I took a, a tomato from the store that had started germinating from the inside. So with tomatoes, they have a sort of mucilaginous, gelatinous type of coating around the seed, which is what protects them from germinating inside a wet tomato. Typically you add water to a soil or to a seed for it to germinate, right? But if it's existing in a wet environment, how does it just not germinate? Well, the answer is that mucilaginous coating. What happens though, is as the tomato starts to rot, the acidity of the tomato starts to eat away at that coating, and as soon as that coating is gone, water can penetrate into the seed and start germinating. So what I saw is I saw that the tomato started to germinate from within, and it looks really creepy if I'm being honest with you. It looked gross, but I said, I'm probably not gonna eat this tomato at this point. Let me plant it in a pot of soil and see what happens. So what ended up happening is probably what they're about to show here where I would say, well, they just showed a complete tomato, but I would say dozens of tomato seedlings started up. And so what I could do then is separate them out 
and plant them in different areas of the garden. So that actually works pretty well. Although again, it's less practical because you should probably be eating the tomatoes you buy or grow instead of using them to grow more tomatoes that you would then use to grow more tomatoes. It's kind of this endless cycle. All right, let's look at this one here. Wilted flowers. Put the flower in there and then chop it and it will regrow. Um, I mean, I have less experience growing flowers than many other gardeners, so I would probably defer to them. But my intuition would tell me a cut flower is probably not going to root that well. And even if it did, the point of life that that plant is in is probably not in the best position to just, well, it certainly won't do that. But it just doesn't seem like the most effective way to do that. Green onions. Okay, we're about to see the classic gardening hack, something with green onions. Uh, again, almost all alliums can be done this way. Um, Okay, so they've taken, they've created just like a little green onion production center. Yeah, this totally works. This is like the same as the leek tip, where what you'd rather do here is plant these in soil and continually cut them instead of pull them out of the soil, uh, chop them up, and then put it back into the soil. So if you're growing green onions, this is just the way to do it. I mean, just cut them off somewhat low, let them keep growing, cut them off, let them keep growing, cut them off, and then every so often you'll probably have to refresh the actual plant, but it, it this completely works. Nope, I think that was it. Lost them, baby. Gotta love them. So, plant hacks. Again, a lot of the times the hack is just doing it the correct way. Just doing it the way that makes the most practical sense. And when I say that, I really mean, does it save you, truly save you time? Does it truly save you money? Or is it truly customized to your unique growing space? I mean, think of things like taking a shoe rack that you don't use, filling that with soil, hanging it on a wall and planting some herbs and leafy greens in there. That's, I guess, a hack, but that makes sense because if, if all you have is one little area of a wall, then maybe that's one of the most effective ways to get a lot of things in a small space. And so that's kind of like a hack, but it fits the rules of saving you time, money, and your unique growing space. So I would use those types of hacks. Uh, some of these are like just too clever for their own good and I wouldn't really prefer to use them. So if you have any other videos that you'd like me to analyze like this, drop them in the comments below. But until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.